Here we are, back in the choir room, the November edition, and we're thrilled to have you here. We look forward to this. We've been looking at some metrics in recent days about how many people are watching the choir room. We're just constantly amazed. Everywhere I go, I was in Illinois last week meeting people at the state convention there saying, we watch the choir room, we watch the choir room. So that's awesome. We're so grateful that you're here, thankful that uh, you give us part of your day today. In the archives, people will be watching this, so we're very grateful for all of you that join us in the choir room. Now, as usual, we've got a 30% discount on all the music that we will listen to today. And you'll get that by staying tuned to the very end. We'll give you a, a code that you'll use and you can, we'll show you how to order it. And we'll show you how to get it. And you'll get that discount from us uh, as our way of saying thank you for being with us today. Uh, also, I want you to know we've got a special, special giveaway toward the end of it that everybody that is signed into the chat, everybody in the chat has to be signed into the chat to get a very special, excuse me, it's very nice, uh, very special giveaway, but only to the people that are in the chat. So go ahead and sign in, get those questions going, start talking with each other. We want to know uh, how we can serve you even better. We've got a very unique uh, broadcast today, and I want to bring in my first guest, Todd Atkins. Todd, welcome to the choir room. Let's welcome him now, everybody. Thank you. Now, I want to introduce you in just a little bit, but... Todd Atkins is the Director of Leadership Development here at Lifeway Christian Resources in the Church Resource Division. You've been at Lifeway, what, a couple of years now? Almost two years, yeah. Almost two years. And you came from, I know, but I want you to tell them. Okay, I came from McLean Bible Church in D.C. Yeah. And uh, was an XP there, worked mostly with campuses and staff development a little Executive bit Executive well. pastor, that would be what an XP is. Sorry. Most of these people think that Jargon. was computer software, but anyway. Okay. Um, <laughs> We wanted to bring you here today because just in the last two weeks or so, LifeWay has launched one of the biggest initiatives, um, certainly one of the biggest initiatives since I've been at LifeWay, perhaps even in the history of LifeWay, uh, in the leadership development area, and you've been in charge of that. And, and we're here today just to talk about this great tool and, and, and the opportunity it presents to worship pastors. So give us, give us the 30-second elevator conversation that about ministry thing. grid. Well, um, Minister Grid is an online platform for learning development. Um, we really want to come alongside churches and facilitate training for every role in the church. So you have uh, a suite for pastors, a suite for staff, uh, a suite for lay leaders and volunteers, and really personal development for anybody, whether they're a new believer or a pastor. Well, Todd, I want to congratulate you because uh, when we were doing the LifeWayWorship.com a few years ago and all the technology development eyes and the whole company yes. were on us and we felt all that deadline, that's what you've just gone through in the last couple of weeks. So you guys are kind of going on no sleep, huh? Absolutely. Very <laughs> sleep deprived. But well, you know, and interesting enough, before you were, you were at LifeWay, when Dr. Rayner first came, and, and some of you may have heard Dr. Rayner talk about this, leadership development. Uh, was a real priority for Dr. Rayner from the first day he became president of LifeWay, now eight years ago. And Todd's presence and work on the ministry grid now is a direct result of that vision. Leadership development is a big issue for churches, isn't it, Todd? Absolutely. Uh, I, I think especially in this day and age when uh, training has changed, uh, you know, 20, 30 years ago, LifeWay could get 16,000 people yeah. to Ridgecrest and Glorietta for a week. They take off a week's vacation yeah. for yeah. Sunday school week. Uh, now those events are two days and, you know, it's we still have several hundred, but nothing near like it used to be. Yeah. And we find that in our churches as well. Um, you know, big churches, small churches, uh, training and leadership development is an ongoing issue. Well, when we talk to churches at LifeWay, and we do all the time uh, through LifeWay Research, but also just the various ministries here at LifeWay, we're always talking to church leaders, and it is a common theme. Help us develop leaders for our churches because as we're, as we're creating ministry and as we're reaching into communities, finding lay people and staff alike that are equipped and trained, it's getting harder and harder to do. And I'm very grateful to be part of an organization like LifeWay that sees this need and, and, and addresses it with a very important tool. It's called the Ministry Grid. Now, the website address is ministrygrid.com, right? Yep. So even while we're looking at this, don't leave the choir room to do it, but you need to visit this website and begin to see what is at Ministry Grid. And when you get there, you're going to find an important part of the uh, material is going to be in the area of worship. 
It's, it's, it's education tools and training tools across all sections of ministries. Uh, the, um, the amount of variety is amazing. But there's a, an entire section around worship. And Todd, we were talking before we started. How many worship videos are at Ministry Grid already? Uh, currently, there are over 150. And we'll continue to add content to that. Yeah. Um, so you have things like, um, there's some conference content like Doxology Theology or the Austin Stone Worship Conference that just yep. happened a couple weeks ago. But the core of the content is people like Grant, who are church practitioners out there doing it with excellence. Uh, we went all around the country to get some of those people yeah. and learn from them how they train their volunteers. In addition to that, you also have some practical things for us as pastors or for you guys as worship, worship pastors, uh, as well as things like, you know, pro presenter. There's actually training. Technical stuff, yeah. Technical down in the weeds stuff uh, yeah. for your volunteers. Because honestly, when we brought in panels of pastors and talked to them, some of them worship pastors, practical, the practical things are what they wanted the most. It's, it's how do I do this thing, whether it's, um, training for a preschool worker sure. or training for a guy running a board or a camera. Uh, it's the practical things that they need more than anything else. Well, you mentioned Grant. Grant Norsworthy. Let's welcome him, for everybody, if you wouldn't mind. <laughs> we asked Grant to come. Now, some of you might recognize Grant because Grant was part of our faculty last year at Ridgecrest and played bass in our band. That's a lot of uh, fun, too. You, you, you played bass for Sonic Flood. That was part of your, your music experience. But more than even that, you, you've you been a, a worshiper, a disciple of Christ, and, and I've seen this in you, Grant. Uh, you've, got a, you've got an amazing teaching gift, and God's get, blessed you with some real insight from the Scripture around worship and theology. And if it, there's a connection between Ministry Grid and, and Grant Norsworthy, but oh, before, sure. we, uh, before we give an example of that, Talk about the vision of what God's called you to do, word and worship, and, and what, what it is the mission that you're on right now. Yeah, for the last five years or so, I've been doing this thing that I call Grant Norsworthy, Word and Song. That's just a description that, uh, like I see myself as a speaker who can sing some songs, not a mm -hmm. singer who talks too much, right? There's a yeah. big difference. <laughs> but, uh, you know, I've just got two main passions that I hope <laughs> flow through my teaching, through what I'm singing and speaking about. And they are, one, let's... let's allow ourselves to swim more deeply into the mystery of what it means to be a worshipper. And what I'm talking about there is the Romans 12, 1 of worship. Sure. Therefore, brothers, be, be a living sacrifice, our whole life response to the grace of God. But on the other hand, the other thing that I'm really passionate about is sacred music, is this idea that uh, when we gather together and when we decide to sing praises to God, when we decide to pray these songs and encourage each other with, with the truths of Scripture, some beautiful, potentially very powerful things can happen. Sure. And I actually believe we're just scratching the surface of that. So my passion is to, on the first hand, help us to understand the bigger picture of worship. On the other hand, encourage musicians right out there in the trenches, the little itty-bitty congregation also right up to the very big conferences and larger, larger congregations. I feel like I've got some teaching that's going to be valuable. Yeah, and you know what? When you were teaching at Ridgecrest this year, uh, we were looking through the evaluations after the conference, was, and, and I actually grew tired of hearing how great your teaching was and how little they said about what I was doing. But anyway, but that's Pushing neither here nor there. <laughs> no, no, we won't do that. But, but uh, I do, really. Uh, I do want people to notice your chair is a little taller than everybody else's, yeah, well, but that's okay. Well, that's well, all right. Got a chair I'm that's not saying anything about anything. <laughs> yeah, saying. Now let's get back to ministry grid because that's what we're, we're talking ministry about. Ministry grid, yeah. Well, the reason I wanted you two guys here today, today to do is because Todd and the team at ministry grid have given us a compelling tool to help churches do training and Grant, you're one of the teachers that we thought of immediately when we began to think about, okay, what, what teaching, what videos could we contribute to this? And so we called you and we yeah. asked you to give us some video content. And just like you're teaching at Ridgecrest, the Ministry Grid team tells me how great your videos are. So, But anyway, to give you a flavor of what Ministry Grid looks like and feels like in these training videos, which many times are just about 10, 12, 15 minutes long, very few longer than that, uh, but intended to be hard-hitting and direct uh, training for people that are leading worship in your church and, and even training for all of us as worship leaders, we wanted to show you two excerpts. It's two different training videos that Grant recorded some time ago. And if you guys are ready to show them, let's watch these two short excerpts of two different training videos that are on Ministry Grid right now in the area of worship. Let's watch. Tip number seven is concentrate. Now... 
there are some musicians, some singers, who can totally go off in their own world of creativity and musical expression, and they can, they can just be there in the moment, and they can create music, and it's beautiful, and it's, it's amazing. That, I think, is perhaps less than 1% of professional musicians. For the rest of us, we really need to concentrate. Especially during the practice and rehearsal time, it's going to be a pretty intense time of concentration and really learning these songs, making sure we're getting it together correctly. And also while we're engaging the congregation. Now, this is not true of all cultures of, uh, of doing church music, but in, in some, perhaps many, there is this tendency to feel like, like we can, um, I guess, use music to get to this euphoric uh, state of spiritual awareness or connection with God, which actually can uh, be very detrimental to what's happening in the band. What I'm trying to say is this. As your expression of worship to God while you're actually playing or singing, I would encourage you to avoid going to that euphoric, otherworldly place. Save that for when you're in the congregation, if that's how you express worship to God. Express the worth of God or worship God by concentrating and staying connected with, the, with your parts, with the music that you need to be playing. It doesn't mean you don't get any chance to be spontaneous. It doesn't mean that you don't uh, get to be free in your, in your skills and your abilities. But we do need to maintain this level of discipline where we're still able to watch the leadership. Are we repeating that chorus or not? I still need to be aware of the changes that are happening in the song. It's happened very, very often where I've seen someone vanishing off into that world of, of personal connection with God, and then next thing you know, they're singing the wrong lyrics, they're playing the wrong notes, there's some sort of train wreck. So, let's concentrate. Tip number six, it's not about what you can play. When musicians and singers are less experienced, perhaps, uh, they tend to think that the sign of a good musician is, is what they can play. It's how many notes they can play, how many chords they know, what their range is, whether they can hit that note. But as we get more developed and more appreciation in our musical ability, we start to realise that it's not what you can play that makes a great musician, it's what you choose to play. This puts a different emphasis. So especially for church music, when we are on a platform, yes, but we're actually not trying to draw attention to ourselves and our abilities. We're trying to create, instead, a sound platform where a group of people want to sing praises to God. It's very important that we realise that my choices of notes and how well they are executed, the tone of that note, these things are, are more important than how many notes I can play or how difficult it was for me to play them. Tip number two for church musicians and singers. When is the time for worship? Well, when is the time for worship? Do you think of it as being about an hour and a half on Sunday morning? Or perhaps Sunday evening? Or do you think of it as those times when you're in the church building? Or maybe also your times of private Bible study? Or, or is it also those times when you put a particular CD of worship songs on in your car? I think it's really important for us musicians and singers to realise that to worship God, means to show the worth of God, to ascribe value to God. The opportunity to worship God is in every moment of every day. It's 24 hours a day, seven days a week, 365 days a year, and 366 on a leap year. Please don't think that worship switches on when you step on a platform in front of a congregation and switches off when you step down. That'll mess up our brains. We need to realise that singing songs, playing music, engaging people to sing praises to God is an expression of worship, one of the expressions. And for us musicians, actually, it's probably the easiest one. The real call to worship is to continue to worship after the songs are finished, after we've left that auditorium. We must continue to show the worth of God, to worship Him with every decision we make, with every word we speak, with every thought with everything that we are. Romans 12, 1 tells us, Therefore, brothers and sisters, in view of God's great mercy, offer yourself as a living sacrifice, holy and acceptable to God, and let that be your spiritual, your reasonable, your intelligent act of worship. Yeah. He so, didn't know what he was talking about a little bit. Yeah, you I look hope. a lot like that guy, as a matter of fact. But, uh, That's really tough looking at yourself on a screen. <laughs> We've got a screen over there, folks. Yeah. Now, Todd, while we, were, while we were watching that, we were talking about how if you were if you were a worship pastor yeah. how would you use that 
I mean, what, what would be an, a way that you would use a video like that? Well, I mean, I, I think the important thing to remember here is we're not trying to digitize discipleship or development of an individual. Um, we recognize that uh, effective training in this day and age is skillful training that is really facilitated by a godly leader. You can't just, you know, digitize discipleship. You, you can't just give somebody training and then kind of, you know, wipe your hands and walk away. Um, so a great example would be assigning what Grant just did. And, but when I was meeting a new musician uh, to say, hey, I would love for you to watch this content and let's meet at Starbucks at 7.30 on Saturday morning and talk about it and, yeah. and process it. If it's a I musician, think, I would say don't go any okay, earlier than is there nine. A 7 nine, I'm sorry. Saturday I'd say nine, nine or nine. I didn't know there was a 7.30 on a Saturday morning. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> now, exactly. Now, 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 quickly, I don't want to miss this part. Um, the kinds of training, that's an example of some of the kind of training, with more theologically based, more, more um, uh, real foundational principles around worship. But they're more practical uh, things like Absolutely. how to run a soundboard, how to, how to do children's choirs, how to play guitar, uh, a lot of practical things. And we're still fleshing this out. So if you've got oh. suggestions, uh, please send those to us and we'd love to add content. And they can upload their own content. Absolutely. Talk about that just a little bit. Well, and that's another thing. You know, it may be um, you, you're presenting stuff basic on guitar, but I may say, you know what? Matt is really having a hard time learning how to play this song. And so I could upload that content, shoot it very, you know, very quickly. Yeah. It's not meant to be, uh, you can have a, a full production like a lot of our content, um, or you can just, you know, use a phone or, or use whatever you need uh, to video content and put that up there on a the grid. So yeah. I could be like, this is the way that you play this song. Uh, this is the part that that person is struggling with and they can watch it on their device and um 10 30 at night you know at their kitchen table and saturday learn night to get before they play it the next morning saturday probably night. yeah keep now, forgetting now. my audience's <laughs> worship guys That's exactly right. no, now sorry. one more one more aspect of this i think is important and grant i'll give you the last word about your perspective on all of this um how does this work for a church i mean a subscription model but absolutely flesh it out a little bit about how how a church would would become a ministry grid church uh, they would go to ministrygrid.com and sign up for a subscription. Uh, that would be based on average church size, uh, average church attendance on a Sunday attendance. morning. Not membership, but attendance. Not membership, but attendance. Yeah. We know that this is the only time that people are actually going to be truthful about <laughs> how, many, how many people attend their church on a weekend. Um, but it's based it. on that. It's based on that. And then... Um, Everyone at the church has access to Ministry Grid, and it really does have everything from poly to parking. I mean, you know, church security, uh, that's, you know, something like 20 or 30 sessions. But when you get into children's ministry, yeah. uh, you're talking over 250 sessions and growing. Um, or small groups, you know, we're approaching 200 sessions in that area. It's, it's, it's pretty robust, and we'll only continue to add content as we go along. That's awesome. I'm very excited about Ministry Grid and the worship part of it, but not just the worship part, all of it. It's a profound investment for Lifeway because it's a need in the church, and that's what we're here to do is to serve the church as the church makes disciples. Now, Grant, give us that mm. closing thought about your view of how Ministry Grid might be affected. Well, I'm just so excited to be partnered with Ministry Grid because, you know, my passion is to serve the church, to resource the church, especially those musicians. You know, I, I feel like I can take a band that's a little clunky and make them better, improve yeah. the band. I've got to tell you, as I travel around the country um, and training these musicians, I find myself saying some of the same things over and over again. Drummers, this. Oh, and I see the yeah. penny drop and I hear the band sound better. Well, I've got a chance to upload those videos, and I have done, that say those, those pearls, I think, yeah. that uh, are now going to be put out to uh, the That's church awesome. across the world, That's across awesome. the United States. I don't have to say it over and over again. I don't have to come to your town. Yeah. And I, I put up a lot, a lot of that content and just so excited about that because yeah. this is what I want to do, get the message out and help the church. Now, I'll tell you what, we've, we've drawn the first winner today is going to win a individual subscription to Ministry Grid. You did know you were giving that away today. Yeah. Yes, okay. So we've already drawn the winner and I'm looking for the name. Oh, it's Charles Dash Batesville. Uh, Batesville. Charles, you have won a individual subscription to Ministry Grid. Wow. And let's congratulate him right now. Yeah. Uh, 
and you'll enjoy that. Uh, to close out this emphasis, and, and we, we, it's been our privilege to show you this great tool today, we've got a closing video that will give you a little bit more of the why uh, leadership development and training in our churches are so important. Let's watch that video right now. I used to say all the time, there's a leadership problem in the church. There's a leadership problem in the church. After years of saying that, I came to realize I really don't think that's true. I keep coming back to Ephesians chapter 4, verses 11 and 12, and it says that Christ gave us the apostles, prophets, evangelists, shepherds, teachers. Why? To equip. And that word there, equip, is train, okay, to train. Why? So that the church can do the work and then be built up. You see, throughout scripture, what we find for the Christian is not so much that they're coming to church in order to uh, watch others do ministry, but the reality is in the scripture you see God has a holy calling on the life of every individual believer uh, to be a missionary engaged in his purpose to redeem people from every tongue, and every tribe, and every nation on this planet. Yeah, Jesus took these men who didn't even know how to lead themselves. He took a group of men that were willing to follow him and he did leadership development with them. He discipled them to the point where they just didn't have intimacy with God, they had influence with others. It's this holy cause ordained by God that we have to get. And I think as pastors and leaders, we have to understand it's not just up to us. This equipping of these people will lead to the growth of the body, uh, to the, the expansion of the church, to the accomplishing of God's mission throughout the nations. I don't think there's a leadership problem in the church. I, I think there's a leadership development problem in the church. Yeah, that's good stuff. Now, now the rest of our time, we're gonna spend it like we usually spend it here in the choir room, and that's looking at great new music. And today we welcome back for the umpteenth time, and I hope there'll be many, many more times, our friends from Praise Gathering, Rose and Jay and Jody. Let's welcome them to the party. Uh, we're sad that Randy's not here today, but in the spirit of proving what a great leader he is, we're going to roll right on without him. Absolutely. So anyway. We are. We are. Uh, but Randy, when you watch this, hello. We wish you were here, but glad you they are. All right. All right. Now, now, Jay, obviously in your role, uh, Vice President of Publication, Rose, a creative, uh, involved in the creative level. You're writing drama and great song lyrics and great songs. And then, Jody, you are the queen of video. You she just is. do such an awesome she job of those videos. And uh, we're just so proud of the work you do. And, you know, for now four plus years, we've been doing this together with you guys. And y'all are like family to us. And, we feel uh, the same way. Yeah. We're so grateful to be a part of all the stuff you're doing. And just awesome. Yeah. Well, we're here because it's November, and when in November, everyone knows in music ministry, November means Easter. Yeah. And, uh, <laughs> and we're going to look first at some excerpts of the video and, the, and recording of your new Easter musical. So, Jay, or yeah. Rose, or Jody, set it up for us. Wait, where shall we start? We'll start I'll, I'll start. <laughs> Two Crowns is the name of the musical, and um, we, if anyone has heard Randy uh, at any time, he will tell you we start all our projects with a title. And so this, this actual project had several titles through the, <laughs> through the production of getting it ready. But once he came in and said two crowns, it just really resonated with me, yeah. resonated with all of us, just the, the imagery of, of Christ leaving his royal crown and trading it for the, the crown of thorns. And so we sort of started at that point. Um, just a couple weeks before the production, uh, before we went into the studio, Randy came and said, Jesus, we crown you with praise. Do you remember that I song? I love that song. I know. And That's the third crown. That's the third crown. <laughs> <laughs> there you go. We, um, I have a wonderful memory of it just being in Brooklyn Tab years ago and hearing it for the first time at that point. And so it just made a, a wonderful jumping off point for us. It's the chorus that starts the musical and comes back again at the end. What we'll hear today is a little bit of that, Jesus, we crown you with praise, and then takes us right into our uh, the Palm Sunday. Uh, blessed, is, blessed is he. Is that what it's called? Yes, yes that's yep. what it's called. So we'll get to hear both of those today, and um, we're just looking forward to sharing. And you guys, you. earlier today, you... you played the entire musical we did. Uh, for our sales team, and uh, our folks just love it. I loved it. Ran uh, Randy sent me a copy of it a couple of weeks ago. It's absolutely stunning. You do it every time. It's just amazing. So right now, we're going to look at two songs from it and the video that goes with it. Yes. We're so excited uh, to welcome you guys here today and to show you the very first look at the new Easter musical from Praise Gathering called Two Crowns. So let's roll that video right now.
ancient prophecies. Timeless struggles. Two crowns. A conflict is about to be settled. It is the inexorable battle between the kingdom of God and the realm of evil. The battle will be waged at a specific time and in a specific place. It is not a clash of provinces. It is a war of principalities. It is the final conflict, and it will be fought to the death. A single act of treachery sets the plan into motion. Just 30 pieces of silver for evil to betray unsearchable riches. The weapons of this war are unexpected. Broken bread, a crown of thorns, a cross. It will not be won by a conquering hero. The triumph will come through a kneeling savior. His victory will look like defeat. But make no mistake, the restoration of humankind is in the balance, and no one knows the lengths to which he will go to win us back. Yes, this king will wear a crown, but not the one we expect. He will lay aside his crown of glory for a crown of thorns. The Lord Jesus will give everything, and nothing will be spared except us. Jesus, we crown you. Wave after wave of shouting pours over Jesus and the Twelve. 
Hosanna! Blessed is the one who comes in the name of the Lord! The crowd follows them all the way from Bethany, their numbers swelling with every step. Palm branches are cut and laid across his path, and coats so many that the ground in front of them becomes a carpet of wild color. Two, two crowns, two crowns, and uh, and that's just two songs from two crowns. Two songs uh, from two crowns. But nice. the music, the whole musical is how long? Like forty-eight minutes. Forty-eight so. minutes. Mm -hmm. So, but here's the great news for everybody: Easter is later this year. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So, so this is the year. If you, if it's been a few years since you've done a full range story telling of the Easter message, um, it's a great year to do it because Easter is later in the year, and this musical. Just talk a little bit, Rose. I mean, since you're you're working on the creative level of the, with all the drama and the narration aspects, as well as writing lyrics, um, talk about the flow of the of the action of the Easter stories that goes through this particular musical. Where there's some special moments in there that they won't see today. Right. Well, we saw "Blessed Is He," which is, of course, the triumphal entry, and um, then we go into that's the the, the crown, crown. Yes. which is really the anchor song of the musical. Yeah. Um, we have um, actually, let me talk specifically about the way that the, the musical and the drama and all that intersect. Right, yeah. Um, because the narrations and the drama all fit together to really tell the complete story. And for me, writing the drama, I get a lot of questions about whether or not, well, okay, if we're going to do the drama, um, should we leave out the narrations? No, they all really work well together. Yeah. They fit together to tell the complete story, to flesh out that whole, that whole thing. Now you spend a little more time than maybe in some other musicals on, on the, the Lord's Supper oh, yes. part. So give us a little flavor of what that, that moment is like in this musical. It's very, pretty special. Very special moment. Uh, it is uh, What Wondrous Love Is This, but mm. we've written uh, some new lyrics for it and we call it Gather Around the Table because that story, that life around the table with the disciples, Jesus telling his father, you know what, I've really loved my own. The ones mm. you gave to me, I've loved them well. And that's how we know. That's how we know that we are believers because of the love that we share, the love that he showed for us. Mm. And so we really tried to make that happen with that whole uh, uh, last supper and the communion time of him, him with the disciples. It's beautiful. It's and, special. and I have to bring in Jody at this point. Jody, the video yeah. of that kind of captures that intimacy that they felt. You can, you can really see the interaction between the disciples and, and the portrayal of Jesus in that relationship. We had so, a great time yeah. working on that video shoot. Um, for those of you who have followed our videos, you know that a lot of those video shoots happen in our company basement, <laughs> and it's really dirty. I've but always wondered what y'all were doing down there. I didn't know. Well, this one just, yeah. 
honestly, the Lord just blessed us. Every element came together in the set. And I was thinking today as we were watching it with the sales team how Amy sings the solo for this song. Um, it's Jay's wife. Jay's wife, yes, thank you. And both Rose's husband and my husband donned costumes and, and <laughs> shared communion. And, and it just felt like such a family moment. Oh, and, yeah. and really that's what these are. Jesus with his closest, dearest earthly family there. And... Um, yeah, the video, I, I'm touched every time yeah. by it. It's well, and that's one of the things that make your videos so distinguishable and so so unique. Uh, cause a, lot of, a lot of people make videos for musicals, but but um, you make them. I mean, mm -hmm. the, you're not grabbing stock footage from, not all from the things. I mean, well, not all the time. I mean, it's always been to just to broaden, deepen the experience, not yeah. just put images up there, but just to really so take true. people to a place. and. And it's a really simple way for smaller churches to um, expand their program in a really easy way. You just you push play, the DVD runs, the track runs, yeah, and you Yeah, it's really doable, and it, it's so attainable for a lot of churches. Yeah. I've got to have one personal note here, because without you knowing this, you reached back into your, your library, which is yeah. so significant, and you pulled forward one of my all-time favorite J. Rouse, Randy Vader songs, which I deeply appreciate you doing that, <laughs> is a song that I That's used... Multiple years in the pageants that I was doing in churches that I served, Behold Calvary's Lamb. Yeah. Uh, I, I, I mean, what moment did you have when you said, Let, that's the right song? Because yeah. it's perfect for well, this music. For us, the starting at the Last Supper, this journey takes about uh, 12 minutes right out of the center of the musical that uh, goes to the Berlioz Requiem, which is the, the road to Calvary. And then once he is actually there, we sing this, this anthem that's been special to us too. And it just felt like, the right song, it just, it, it really you. caps the moment. Behold Calvary's Lamb is a stunning musical moment by itself, and it's perfect for this musical. Two crowns, it's incredible. Well, I wish we could play the whole thing for you. Uh, you'll need to get a promo pack at least and check this out, because it's a great, great thing. Mm -hmm. Now, let's move away from that and into the first anthem. Yeah, that He Will Carry You, which uh, Scott Wesley Brown, you mm -hmm. remember that, that name? Classic and, song. And um, this has always been one of Randy's favorite songs. A couple years ago, the vocal band recorded it, so it sort of got on my radar again. This is a lyric, there's no problem too big, God can't solve it. No mountain too tall, God can't move it. Storm too dark, God can't calm it. No sorrow too deep, He can't soothe it. It's yeah. just a wonderful ministry awesome lyric. Song. Makes yeah. a great ministry song for your choir. Well, we need to listen to it right now. A new anthem from Praise Gathering, of the classic Scott Wesley Brown song, He Will Carry You. Let's listen now.
Starts with a great song. Yeah, and, absolutely. And that was a great one. Great choice to bring that back. Rose, would you mind giving us a quick introduction to this next song that you and Jay wrote together? Sure. We have been together for 20 years, Praise Gathering Music Group. And uh, so we, we like to celebrate at Praise Gathering. Mm. <laughs> and what do you give a, as a gift to a songwriter? You write them a song. Mm. So for Randy and, and Carol, we wanted to give them the song. We, we wrote This Must Be Grace and all about our life together around the table, all these 20 years, cool. all that, the hard places that we have come from and we have walked together in community. And so um, Jay and I wrote This Must Be Grace. For That's that. special. Let's listen to it right mm -hmm. now. This Must Be Grace.
That's so special to write a song to commemorate 20 years of ministry together. Uh, if you are not already a member of the Praise Gathering Choral Club, I hope you'll, you'll do that real soon because you'll get all of this material, two releases a year, Easter and Christmas and all the anthems that in between. Uh, you need to be part of that, and to, we're going to give one of those away right now. So uh, David underscore Scammell, uh, you have won a free subscription to the Praise Gathering Choral Club. If you're already a member of it, uh, you'll just get the next renewal free. Uh, but that's our way of thanking all of you for being in the choir room. You need to email us so we'll know how to get that uh, information to you to make your subscription free. Uh, let's set up the next song, uh, Christ is Risen. One of uh, my favorite worship songs oh my right gosh. now. Just yeah. to, and and I, I was said to the sales staff this morning that it, I love this lyric. You sort of start them because you hear people would like to use this song. And then as I get into it, working on the arrangement, mm. I realize that the, the, let, the lyric let no itself more is, sin. Yeah. Oh, wow. Um, in Easter anthem. It I, works great for I Easter. had a wonderful uh, conversation with Matt Marr, and I think they're going to put the link to that on here. Uh, maybe some of you could check that out. Matt's a, cool. pro a profound writer and wrote this with Mia Fields, uh, but it's a phenomenal song. It, uh, it's one of the best Easter songs I've heard in a long, long, long time. And uh, let's start rolling that now. It's going to be a wonderful experience just to hear it again. Uh, Jay's new arrangement of Christ is Risen. Let's listen now.
Absolutely, I love that song. Yeah, and uh, we've got we've got one more thing to look at. It's yes. an excerpt it from is. another Easter project from Praise Gathering called Finished. I believe Jody, you're gonna well, kind of tell us about it. This is a special piece that we worked. Um, well, I I say we mostly you worked with Marty Parks. Marty Parks, good friend of ours, done yeah. several of these for us. So, love yeah. that guy. It's specifically um, a shorter musical for sh smaller minutes. choirs and. Um, the song that we're going to show you today is um, What Language Shall I Borrow? And mm -hmm. Marty, now correct me if I'm wrong, wrote a new melody to mm -hmm. go with ancient lyrics. Right. And on the video, I just got so excited to work on this video because the lyrics are so poetic. So you will find lyrics throughout on this song because I don't want you to miss a single word. Mm -hmm. And um, it's just a beautiful piece. Um, just phrases that you will want to carry with you. The musical itself is a, is a Gaither musical and it has several of Bill and Gloria's biggest things. That, um, where these lamb medley, uh, it is finished of course, makes its way into yes. the finished musical. Starts with Christ the Lord is Risen Today, Resurrection, which is another Bill and Gloria and Michael W. Smith. Just a, a, a solid 25 minutes, easy to do as a part of an Easter or morning service when your pastor's gonna sure. speak, those sure. kinds of things. So. Full DVD. Well, Full DVD. Mm -hmm. yep. yep. That's awesome. Well, it's um, it's it has a video with it, so we're gonna watch the video and listen to this one song from the larger work uh, called Finished, and the song is What Language Shall I Borrow? So let's watch it right now. It is finished. The task is complete, the message proclaimed, the song is sung, and freedom is accomplished. Read for yourself in God's Word the stories of those who found themselves in circumstances they never deserved. None of them is more significant than the story of whom it was written. God made him who had no sin to be sin for us so that in him we might become the righteousness of God. O oh, sacred head now wounded, with grief and shame weighed down, thou scornfully surrounded, with thorns thine only crown. How pale thou art with anguish, with sore abuse and scorn. How does that visage language, which once was bright as me? I'm sure everyone noticed, but that's that's from the classic yeah. "O Sacred Head Now Wounded." Yeah. Uh, 
Beautiful, beautiful setting. Um, now, we've got some giveaways, so I hope everybody's ready to win, because here it comes. As a matter of fact, um, we're going to give everybody that's in the chat something today as a Christmas present, but we need you to give us your mailing address, so we'll know where to send the gift. your Christmas the gift. present. <laughs> and that's our way of thanking you for being such a loyal part of the choir room audience. You know, we learned today, maybe I shouldn't say this, I want to say it. We learned today that the choir room is the most watched webcast uh, around right. Lifeway. Uh, so we have a loyal group of folks that watch this every month, and we're very, very thankful for that. It's a blessing to get to come to you. Now, um, send us your address so we can give you the, the giveaway from um, today. Uh, but we have the big winner. Um, we always do a big winner every, every time. You get your choice of anything that we read today, even one of the musicals. Um, as many copies as you would use for your choir, don't get 700 of them, but whatever you would order for your choir, and then whatever accompaniment you, you prefer, if it's orchestration or if it's track, either one, DVD, uh, you'd certainly want to use DVD on these that have been available today. Uh, that is free to one of you, and the winner today, this is what we call the big giveaway, is Ron underscore Burns. So Ron, you can pick any title today, an anthem or one of the musicals, and uh, your choice of accompaniment, and uh, you're all set. So that's, that's great, and I'm glad we could do that. Now, I'm also real excited. Uh, we won't have a choir room in December. Uh, we're going to just celebrate Christmas together uh, and doing all of our Christmas programs. Uh, none of these guys would have time for one of these no, in December. Uh, but in January, we're going to come back, and you, can you believe that January... The choir room in January will mark the beginning of the fifth year that we've done this, wow. which is hard for me to believe. Yeah, yeah that's that cool. That's great. cool. Yeah. And, um, and we're, we're, we're redesigning it. It's, it's going to go to a whole nother level. It's going to be a, a phenomenal thing. We've got some new ideas about how we'd like to do this webcast to make it even more interesting and hopefully even more informative and helpful to all of you that we're here to serve. So, so when you come back in January, we've got some special guests that are going to help us kick off a new format for the choir room. Uh, Keith Getty is going to be here. Mm, so we'll be great. talking about modern hymns with Keith. David and Celeste Clydesdale <laughs> are going to be, be here. And, uh, and my worship pastor and great, great leader, Dennis Worley, is going to be here with us in, on, uh, in January. And that's going to be uh, one of the things different. We're not always going to be on Thursday. Of course, today we're on Friday. But um, it's going to be on a Tuesday, and it's going to be at 11 o'clock on January the 21st, 11 o'clock Central Time. Uh, and it'll be the first choir room of 2014, and it's going to be awesome. So, so we hope uh, all of you will be able to join us for that. Now, here's the promo code that you're going to need uh, to get the 30% discount on everything that uh, you've heard today. And there are the ways that you can order. You see, uh, they'll bring that up on the screen. I thought they had. Uh, but you can call or fax or email or all these ways. And if you use this code, uh, you'll get a 30% discount on everything that you order today. It's been our delight to have Praise Gathering here today. Thank you, guys. We miss, we miss Randy and Carol and the rest of the crew, but so glad y'all could come. And it was awesome to see the Ministry Grid team with us today. More than anything else, it was awesome to connect with you today. If we can ever help you, serve you in any way, please let us know. We're here for you. We love you very much. God bless you. Have a great rest of your day. Thanks for joining us.